Malls across America starting to reopen, and that's a critical moment for a company like Focus Brands, uh, the parent company of familiar mall names like uh, Auntie Anne's, Cinnabon, Carvel. I, I could go on and on. I, I mean, that's a really good focus uh, in, on, on those brands in particular. I see why it's named that. We're joined now by Jim Holthauser, the CEO of Focus Brands, which has more than 6,000 uh, restaurants and ice cream shops. So, Jim, you were at Hilton for 20 years through September 11th and through 08, through, through the recession. And then when did you join this company? It was like right before COVID-19. So uh, it, that you've, you've had some experience, but you're thrown right back uh, into, the, into, into t- some tough sledding right away. That's right, Joe. It, I, I was literally here two weeks. Uh, we, I had two full weeks in the office with, uh, w- you know, with, with the full team. And uh, by week three, I mean, we were sending people home. So, I mean, I mean, many hundreds of people home. And then, the, the, you know, the following week, unfortunately, we had announced furloughs and, 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 and some layoffs. So, yeah, it was, it was kind of an a inauspicious start. But, um, you know, to your point, um, you, know, you know, this industry, the hospitality industry has been through these things before. So, uh, there, you know, there is a playbook that you follow, right, in, in, in terms of protecting your cash and taking care of your employees and taking care of your franchisees. So, so uh, you know, so as, as I look back on things like 9/11, uh, you know, the financial meltdown, a couple of recessions thrown in here and there, um, yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah, kind of knew what to do. And the the advantage of being having all a lot of your franchises in malls, that's great when everybody's going to malls. But it seems like you'd be even in in, in a worse position with the COVID crisis because the malls closed down. Although I can tell you, Jim, we 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 do go to the the Short Hills Mall, and there are some things that that you can still get takeout. Uh, from so I don't know whether you were able to do that, but mostly malls are or the parking lots are empty and, and they're closed down. But reopening now, yeah, right. So so Joe, I guess what I would tell you is that, is that it, this is a very diversified portfolio, right? I mean, and, and so we, we've got you're right, we've got we've got a lot of mall exposure, uh, but at the same time that's balanced with with lots and lots of different location types. Um, we know without a doubt the part of the portfolio that has been hit hardest is has been the malls. Uh, luckily, uh, I think there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, some hope here. Uh, malls have begun to open, reopen. Uh, what we're seeing is that, you know, customers are not flooding back quite yet. Um, uh, a lot of the retail has not begun to reopen. So it's a little spotty here and there, right? But, but the point is they are opening and, and a lot of our brands like Annie Ann's are, are there ready to receive customers. You know, I saw something today, Jim, that, that one of the reasons basketball is going to be hard to reopen because it's indoors. It's a sport that's indoors. And we're finding more and more that, that COVID is an indoor thing. It, does a mall count as, as indoors? I, I would think it's, it seems like you could do some good social distancing in a three-story mall that, that's kind of like outside. Or, or do we consider malls indoors? Well, uh, what I'm seeing is that um, in, in some cases, malls are prepared to limit the number of traffic, number of people who can actually come in, just just like you would any kind of retail establishment, right? Um, I, I, you know, and as you know, these are often very cavernous places, so I, I don't yeah. know, you know, how long it'll take before we reach that number. Uh, I think most retailers right now are just are grateful for any kind of traffic that's coming to malls. To what, be honest, did did any of your brands? Uh, distinguish themselves as doing better. So, w- which brands did the best? Which ones were hurt the most? Yeah, so so brands like Annie Ann's that have a, a, again a very high mall exposure. You know, the, 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 those franchisees, those restaurants have really felt the most pain. Uh, at the end, of, at the other end of the spectrum, Joe, you have brands like Schlotsky's with that are that are a lot of freestanding, um, you know, locations with drive-throughs, and drive-through was was, was really key. That. That was one of those features that really determined really how just how well you you, you did during this pandemic. And uh, you know uh, we've got 90% of the Slotsky stores uh, open today. So um, yeah. and when you look at their revenue, I mean they're they're, they're just shy of pre-COVID levels. So so it, again, it really runs the gamut from from malls to to, yep. to, to again to these standalone restaurants yep. with, with with drive-through facilities. And so many questions for you. The, the but we got you know maybe only 30 seconds. Did, did your franchisees were they able to get PPP money and and uh, will employees be coming back a, as a as a rule for, at your uh, at Focus? Yes. 
I'll tell you what, I mean, yes, owners definitely needed a, a, an infusion of liquidity, without a doubt. Um, you know, again, these are these these are other people's companies. They're not ours. They're under license with us. But but I will tell you, we did everything we could to to educate them and put information in front of them. And and and, and from what I can tell, the vast majority of them have applied and received you know PPP money. So again, that was that was just a very welcome form of relief for us.